It's Criterion time. I'm Nate Jackson. Criterion person. And this entry, entry 8, is the killer. <laughs> Uh, 1989, John Woo. Uh, man, this one was a trip and a half. 110 minutes of just, just shooting, 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 and shooting, and shooting, and more shooting. So, the entry, the version I have is not the Criterion Collection edition. It's uh, Windstar. Um, but, you know, I looked at the, the entry on the Criterion website, and... There's not much that's special as far as supplements. There's commentary, of course, but we're not talking about commentary. Um, there, I think, were deleted scenes, um, and those would be interesting to see, especially if the movie is long as this is. I mean, it's only an hour and ten minutes, but I mean, an hour and fifty minutes, but still. It was such a strong movie that you want to see, you know, any deleted scenes that were available. So, let's talk about The Killer. It's basically a, an action film. It's one of the. It's a very influential action film. And plot wise, let's talk about the plot. It's about a, a killer. A, a killer named Jeffrey who works with a mob and he's trying to get out because he ends up. Um, on a job, he ends up um, attacking a young singer who sings a bar and ends up shooting her uh, like across the eyes and da damaging her cornea to the point where she can no longer see or she can't see perfectly and so he feels bad and he ends up you know falling kind of falling for her and he promises her that he will get the money to you know give her back her eyesight or you know, to find the corneas for her and yeah so that's basically it and he ends up getting hired for one more job, and the and the mob turn on him, or the the person who hired him to do the job now wants him dead. It's kind of a I mean, just you know, just because he's an idiot. Or something. And all of this is taking place while a cop, um, well, the serial killer, so the serial killers, the killers, and we'll call him serial killer. The killer's name is Jeffrey. The cop's name is Lee. Thank you. Um, uh, and the singer's name is Je Jenny, and it's basically just a crazy story where um, he goes out looking for Jeffrey, and then the, and about halfway through the movie, there's this really famous scene where, where uh, it's like you know they, they there's a really famous scene where both of them pull the gun on each other when they first meet for the first time. It's like they know that each each other's in the built in the building that they're in and so they they flip forward and just it's like it's like you know they've got, got a gun to each other's head and it's just like ooh. I mean it's it's on the cover here I don't know if you can see it but it's like you know you can't see there's that's Jeffrey and that's Lee with stinking link plus stickers you know what are you gonna do but anyway so basically uh they they all get tangled into each other's lives, and, and uh, first they use Jenny's bait, but eventually Jeffrey takes over or something, and and about you know like I think only a half hour, forty five minutes left of the film, Lee and Jeffrey you know, realize that they're kind of there's a they have a lot in common and they become friends, and he realizes that you know Lee realizes he's not going to turn this guy in because he doesn't want to kill anymore and all that so. It's just it's it's amazing when they end up fighting for each other's life at the end. And of course, and um, yeah, in the end, it's just it's very very tragic because uh, Jeffrey ends up dying, um, getting shot by the main main killer guy. Um, in fact, I think he loses his eyesight at the end. Um, his his eyes eyes are shot out and he's left. And the last thing he does is try to find Jenny, and they both crawl past each other. And it's just, Oh man! In the end, uh, Lee ends up killing him in cold blood, and I guess he's arrested for it. But it doesn't say exactly what happened. It was just flashbacks of the 
speeches they have during the film. Yeah, it's a very tragic film. So what I was thinking about while I was watching this film is basically watching John Woo's direction. You know, I try to get in the heads of the Criterion peoples, peoples who choose these films. And uh, what I saw in this was the fact that it was just the influence. You know, you can see so much influence in this film in so many of our films, AKR meaning American films, you know, Quentin Tarantino stuff, gosh, I can't think of any other directors who, you know, big shootout scenes, you know, there's these, it's definitely, if you want, if you want shootout scenes, you, you gotta get to kill them, that's, that's all I have to say. There's so many scenes, it's like, whoa, just like, people get shot in midair, and just, you know, quick shoots and all that it's just it's bizarre it's so crazy so yeah so i think because of the influence that it's had on american directors i feel like that's why they put this one in they put the killer in because it was just so it was just so you know bloody brilliant and that's another thing it's that's actually an interesting point i mean this is the bloodiest film we've had yet i believe i mean seven samurai seven samurai wasn't that bloody i mean there was it was violent but it wasn't like Guys don't get shot in the head or anything like that, you know, like a killer, man. It's definitely, it's interesting. I mean, it's like definitely the most action-packed film um, that we've had yet. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Seven Samurai, Seven Samurai. Seven Samurai is a great film, but it's not the killer. This is something different. This is 1989. That was 1950, whatever the heck it was. I don't remember these things. I'm not going back to whatever that film was. Uh, Seven Samurai. I'm not going back and watching my old reviews and going to tell you what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say. That's all I can really say about this one. Um, it's a tragic ending, uh, you know, but at the same time, just a great, an action, great action-packed film. I feel like John Woo direction with the the act, the violence, and the suspense. The suspense right before someone gets shot, or like when they know that someone's getting, you know, when the character knows that someone's hiding, it's like the way he reveals that. For instance, there's a scene where one of the killers is on the beach, and he sees this little girl, and he smiles and waves and walks towards her, and there's a guy in the bushes waiting to kill her, kill him, and the little girl sees this, like the shine of his the, the gun or something in the bushes. And frowns, and he notices this, and he stops, and he takes off his glasses, and he looks, and he can see the shine in the reflection of his glasses, and he puts them back on, and he just, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. So, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, grade. I give it an A minus. I give it a, I give it a, no, I give it, you know, I'm giving it a B plus. That ending was just a little, just, you know, hit me a little. So I'll give it a B plus. It was action films. Great action, you know, all that, but in the end, I just wish that there was a, just a little better outcome for the characters. I mean, of course, all the, of course, the good guys quote unquote won, but uh, how much did they really win, you know? So yeah, B plus. And of course, like I said, because of, uh, because there's no, you know, bonus features on here. Can't really say anything else. So that's it for the killer number eight. Uh, number nine is, I think, number nine is another John Woo film, which is probably bloodier than that one. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, right after, as soon as this is over, I'll go check on the, uh, the internets, on the libraries, and find out if we can't find a copy of it somewhere floating around in our database. If not, then, you know, we'll find it somewhere. I'll buy it or you know, whatever it is, I'm sure. I'm sure it's out there floating around there somewhere. And we'll probably get to that one maybe next week. Maybe, yeah, maybe next week, actually. Um, yeah, probably next week, actually, now that I think of it. My schedule has been opening up a little bit, a little bit, you know, slowly but surely. Uh, and that's all I got to say. Oh, also, just as a side note, I know I don't know if you've noticed, but I've worn this brown shirt in like the last three or four, maybe five reviews I've done. 
I just wanted to let you know that I have more clothing. This this shirt is like not the only shirt I have. Um, I'm actually trying to get a Criterion like T-shirt from their website to wear here on the reviews and just put it on. And just look a little more official or something. So yeah, so that might happen. You know, by the end of the year, I'll probably try to get one because I'll definitely be nowhere near the end of the films. I'm only on number eight. I, I really hope it's number eight. Grand Illusion, Seven Samurai, Lady Vanishes, Amar Ford, Orange Blows, Beauty and the Beast, Night to Remember, The Killer. I really hope that's right. I don't know. But anyway, that's all I got for you. So B plus on The Killer. Go check it out if you want blood and violence and suspense and all that good stuff done, you know, with a lot more finesse than we do it. I swear, I, I love it how how Americans think they you know, just get away with stealing other people's ideas and thinking they can make it better, but no, they're just they're just shit, just you know, shitting out their ass. It's funny. We're a funny, funny, funny country. And on that note, we're out. So uh, we'll see you next week for the number nine John Woo whatever film it is. And I'm Nate Jackson, and this has been the Criterion Review. And, and when I get the shirt, I'll point at it or something, or I'll, I'll put it up to the thing. But right now, it's still old, rusty brown. And uh, that's it. Goodbye.